Joining us via Zoom is Ewan Curry from the Sheepdogs. Uh, first new music is since 2018 has landed in our inbox. We got our mitts on Keep On Loving You, the lead single. Uh, it comes from an album that's going to drop May the 28th called No Simple Thing. Ewan, we're so pumped about this, and it's great to reconnect with you, man. How are you? Uh, you know, I can't complain. I mean, I, I could, but can't we all right now? <laughs> no, it, it's uh, it's pretty cool to see that you guys recorded this album in Montreal. And what I remember about Montreal growing up as a kid in Ontario was it was the place to go to party. I remember you could get into a bar with just somebody's photo on an ID when you were 16. I remember going to a strip club for the first time in Montreal when I was 16. And it was just such a party atmosphere. And I, I love everything about Montreal and, and hanging out there. And it seems like it'd be a really cool place to record an album with uh, the charm and the old feeling of downtown. However, you guys recorded this during a pandemic where Montreal was basically shut down. What was it like for you guys, the Sheepdogs, uh, recording No Simple Thing this summer? Yeah, well, you said it, you know, everything was closed, like all the fun, you know, crazy. We always go to crazy like metal bars and like we like just really random places. But uh, yeah, man, everything was closed. Like we do a long day of recording and we go back to a hotel. We were like the only people staying in this hotel. So you'd put your mask on and walk through the lobby and then you just get in your room and be like, oh, that's weird. And then like at the end of the day, you know, you want to kind of unwind after recording. We we go to one guy's room. We just kind of crank beers and listen to a, a Bluetooth speaker, you know, so it's uh, it was hardly like rock and roll decadence, you know. How about uh, how about the food in Montreal? As I understand, I've been told by a few different people, you uh, you ordered a ton of skip the dishes, may have tried every restaurant in Montreal whilst recording there. So who's got the best food in Montreal? uh i don't know but you know we we try to eat healthy when we're recording because it's like you don't want to get if you eat a big lunch it just ruins your day but the last day we were there we we ordered like uh like some i can't remember the place but we everything had foie gras on it so it was just like as heavy as can be and like the most french food but it was absolutely delicious uh I, i'll try to think of the name but i can't remember it's a french name you know, there's nothing productive that comes from like, you know, a big heavy afternoon lunch with some beers. The rest of the day is shut down after that. Yeah, man. Like I, I if I day drink, I'm 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 just drinking, period. Like it's not <laughs> a there's no going back to work after. So uh, keep on loving you out right now about the Sheepdogs, your first new music that we've heard from you guys in, in a couple of years. And I hope you don't take this the wrong way. But when I heard it, I was like, man, this song is catchy as hell. If there's like a Canadian sitcom that comes out in the next few years, this is going to be the theme song for that show because you'll be humming along to it when you hear it. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, Keep On Loving You that's out right now? Yeah, I mean, it's like, a, you know, I think it's feel good vibes. It's, you know, a song about when you're, when you have a love and your love is threatened, you know, what are you going to do to to stand up and, and protect it? And, uh, you know, it's that kind of theme of like when times are tough, you know, what do you do? How do you stand tall and, and, and uh, keep strong? So I think that's kind of the song we need right now. And I always look to rock and roll as kind of like, a, you know, make me feel good, make me feel cool. And, you know, that's kind of what I always thought rock and roll was. It was about, you know, just giving you a good time and good vibes so that's kind of what the song is you know it's like we borrowed like some kind of like thin lizzy vibes some kind of glam vibes but we just wanted to like i don't know like i think everyone's just sick of, of everything right now let's just like like summer's almost here let's just have a good time folks come on i feel you um i wanted to ask you uh, as a rock star as an artist what you think about nfts you know because we, we sit there and we look at like the non-fungible token thing and about how it's starting to like come into rock and, and start to be a way to like distribute art um you know as a guy who makes art like is that something where you go huh i gotta get in on the nft thing or do you look at that and go i don't know what that is and it may just be a little flash in the pan like the tamagotchi was in the 90s oh man tamagotchi uh <laughs> yeah i don't know man like i i kind of just been wrapping my head around it like you know it's kind of like bitcoin and all that stuff you know uh, i i guess i mean i'm, I'm probably in favor of adding more ways for musicians to make money if it's possible because all we've done over the last you know 20 years is take away revenue streams from musicians so you know if if we can put more money in the hands of the people that create the music i say why not um but it does seem really weird i was reading a thing about you know i guess what is it there's like a cobain photo they're making into a non-fungible token i don't know i'm i'm a i, I listen to 70s music and and Drink light beer. Like, what do I know about non fungible tokens? You know, 
you know, a lot of people are saying that uh, the pandemic has been has been great for rock and roll. And, and I kind of agree in a sense that, you know, obviously you guys aren't out touring, you're not playing shows, but there's been so much downtime for a lot of rock bands that we're seeing bands like, you know, such as yourself, the Sheepdogs, you guys haven't put out music in quite some time. And, and now you guys have gotten together. You've recorded a new album. It's coming out in the midst of a pandemic. We've seen drive in shows. We've seen, you know, live streams. And like I said, new albums, you know, despite and let, let's put the, the sickness and the death aside for the Sheepdogs. Let's use you as the example. Has the pandemic been a good thing for your band and creativity and the in terms of just like sitting down and putting stuff out a little bit yeah i mean i think it gave like this is the longest i've been at home since i was like 20 you know we're talking 15 years here it's so like just on like a mental break you know having a break from the road is probably good you know like we're really hitting it hard for the last 15 years and i'm just exhausted but uh I, now i miss the road which is good for future you know touring but yeah like creative wise like when we got all this downtime like I live in Toronto. I went and I found some really weird apartment in the downtown core. And, and that's where I'm at right now. And I turned it into a real weird, like makeshift studio. And I just, I come here every day. I'm by myself. So I'm at no risk. And I just basically work on tunes every day. And it's, it's great because, you know, when you're touring all the time, it's really hard to write. Traveling around is just not really conducive for like, you know, strumming a guitar because it's a lot of like hurry up, get in the van or get on the plane or whatever. So. Uh, it's definitely good. It gives us gives us time to come up with new songs. And the problem is just that it's hard to release music. So we're kind of uh, just about to start doing that here. But we're going to try to come with a few releases one after another and see how it goes. And hopefully we can get on the road. So. What uh, what you do to pass the time personally, like when you weren't when you weren't making rock music, you know, like was it for some people it was Tiger King, some people it was Sourdough, other people it was Kettlebells. Like, like uh, what'd you do? Um, I like barbecue, like I'm into like, you know, the charcoal grill and uh, I like yeah. smoking things. Um, I I always wanted to get into whiskey, you know, more than just having a shot of Jameson at the bar. So I, I, I tried a lot of different whiskeys, uh, probably too many. Uh, yeah, but I really I just try to write a lot of music, man. Like I just I've always said if I had the time, I'd love to have a studio. So I just set up my like I've got all my instruments that I bought over the years brought them in here I, i've been drumming playing the clarinet i've got crazy giant amps that i can blast as loud as i want it's just it's a blast jd why don't you give uh you and some whiskey recommendations jd is like the resident whiskey guy in all of calgary well the, yeah, the worst you... part is that i don't have anything local in front of me the only bottle i have uh, on the desk is a uh, a montana whiskey called uh, cool. whistling andy uh which is a rye from montana but i like you it was kind of cool to just like do it sounds kind of sad when you say it out loud, but it was cool to just like sit down with a bottle of whiskey and just kind of like break it down yourself, you know, like have a dram go like, OK, I got this, this and this and then have another dram. And then before you know it, the bottle is this empty. But it's a, it's yeah. a cool hobby to get into. No, I dig it, man, because there's a lot of like slam. Like I bartended for a long time and, and it was you know, a lot of slam and Jameson. And then now I can't even drink it because it's just it's too sweet. So, I you know. <laughs> Yeah, I really like the bourbon. And I know you guys in Calgary have really good, uh, you guys have good selection out there, right? Yeah, we actually, you probably, you're familiar with the neck of the woods called Tabor in Alberta, like Eastern Alberta, yeah. Southeast Alberta. Tabor's corn. known for their corn. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So a local distillery, next time you're back in Calgary, we can't wait to have you. Bridgeland Distillery is doing a Tabor corn bourbon and it's spectacular. I'm in, I'm in. It would, you know, I've been uh, lucky enough to bump into you guys uh, over the years, just being in radio and you guys being in a, in a rock band. I remember seeing you guys. I had the most Saskatoon moment of all time. I had just interviewed Kim Coates from Saskatchewan. I was stuck at the airport. I had a layover. It was the middle of the night. It was like the worst airport in Saskatoon I could ever imagine. Nothing was open. And I looked over and your band was just sitting there waiting for a flight, as was I. And I also yeah. ran into you guys uh, a couple times, actually, at Blue Jays games. I know you guys are, are big baseball fans and another big baseball fan in, uh, in rock and roll, Getty Lee of Rush. And I was wondering, you know, for all the time you guys spend... I'll always call it the Sky Dome, by the way. For all the times you guys have yeah. spent at the Sky Dome watching the Jays, have you ever bumped into Getty Lee and, and got a chance to talk music and baseball with him? No, I never I never have. Well, probably because I sit in the cheap seats. Like I, I, I like the 500s, you know, up top. And it's not because not I'm cheap, but just because, I don't know, it just feels good, like being way up high. But I think I went to like, uh, I think the first couple of years I moved to Toronto, I went to like 35, 40 games a year. Like I would just go every day I could. 
you know, that's about half the games they play at home. So, uh, yeah, I'd love to meet Getty. But Kim Coates is a bud. He's a uh, Kim Coates is a great dude, and uh, he reps Saskatoon hard, man. Yeah. Kim Coates is uh, from Sons of Anarchy and uh, and a whole bunch of other shows. If if anyone doesn't know that's, that's right. watching this right now, yeah, last uh, cool guy. Last thing I wanted to ask you was, uh, what do you miss about Calgary? You've been through Calgary a ton. Uh, we love you in Calgary. We miss you. What do you miss about us? It's that whole kind of Western Canadian vibe. It's like, you know, I get back to Saskatoon a bunch of times a year because my parents and my family are there. And like, I think of Calgary as being very related to Saskatoon. I mean, how many Sask people are out in Calgary that you just see every day? Like, it's a cra crazy number. But it's, you know, very different here in Ontario. Like, it's just like Ontario is very like, oh, well, we're the center of Canada and all that kind of stuff. And it's, they definitely act that way. So, you know, Calgary is very proud of folks out there. They love to party. You know, I think about like, just like, you know, all the beer that gets made out there and like Stampede and just, it's just such a different world. And I don't know, I'm really looking forward to getting back out there. It just feels like this is the longest I've gone about being, you know, in, in Alberta even, so. Can't wait. My last question for you, Ewan, is, you know, a, a lot of bands will, you know, hire a producer, you know, some of the bigger bands will get like a guy like uh, a Bob Rock or a, or a Greg Kirsten. And those kind of guys love to be so involved with the process of, of writing music with the bands and just being there for every step of the way. You know, when you produce this record yourself, do you kind of feel like an extra weight on your shoulder where you're writing the music, you're singing the music, now you're producing the music. Do you kind of feel like there's weight on your shoulder that this has to be successful because it's basically all you? Yeah, a little bit, like for sure, you know, but at the other, on the other hand, it's like, nobody's going to care about our record more than me. Um, you know, some of these big time names, like the guys you mentioned or other people that have been suggested to us over the years, they'll be like, okay, here's my fee. And you get two weeks of my time and good luck, you know, get on hold of me later on. Like it's, I'm going to care about this record, you know, way more than anyone else does. And I, I like producing, you know, I'm happy to try something else out, but I'm going to keep doing it until they tell me I can't. Love that. Love that. Uh, you know, thanks for your time, man. We really appreciate it. We can't wait to have you in our neck of the woods again. Like you were saying, it, it just, it's been way too goddamn long and uh, you know, we can't yeah. get reunited soon enough. So I uh, appreciate your time today. Thanks boys. Appreciate it.